so. I just went, so I just started recording a video and because I was also uploading a video at the same time, um, I, it was really laggy and I decided, you know, I'm not going to do this. Why? And I, I just like, okay, but I, was, I was kind of failing my attempts at getting out of bounds and just decided, you know, I'll, there's no point in leaving bonds and coming back in. I'll just, I'll just let the final remaining Stromling kill me. <laughs> and look back to the screen and see that I'm still alive. What? How? Why? Please explain. I am very confused right now. So apparently it's just, apparently there's a position here where they can't hit you. Seems to be the conclusion. Um, I'm gonna die anyway. Because I want to get a run from the start. That confuses me. So that's not my best time. Um, okay, anyway. Let's wait a second. Okay, uh, I'm going to... So, I'll get copyright strikes if I uh, record the music that I will be listening to over the course of this run. However, I can just tell you what that music is. And if you were interested, you can listen along. I'm listening to um, Two Steps From Hell Unleashed. I'm listening to that full album. And I will be pressing play right about now. I didn't realize how quiet the first song was. Um, okay. Let's. Okay, well, that was just a misplay, but I'm just going to try and get rid of one of them. I don't really need to. The number of them doesn't make a huge difference to me. All right, this is running so much more smoothly. Now, okay, this is tons better. Also, I just processed something. What, okay, what is the big one a reference to? Because I'm now real, realizing that it must be a reference to something, right? Because Well, surely it is. Because, I mean, for starters, it's LU. There are tons of references that I don't get or that I don't realize are references. But I'm now just thinking that, like, I know... Bloons Tower Defense 6 has something like that with the mortar. Has some upgrade which is called like uh I know there's one called the biggest one. I'm assuming that's the tier five and that the big one's tier four, because I vaguely also recall there being the big one there. Um and it would be a little I uh, yeah. So what is this because it, it wouldn't surprise me if it is just a reference to a random I don't know, to some random bit of military history. But I, yeah, I have no idea. Like, it seems like it must be a reference to something, because there's no way those two games were independently having, having a weapon which is in some senses fairly similar, i.e. An explosive which you eat at stuff. There's no way they both did that independently, right? Ow! That <laughs> flew directly over that guy's head. Now I create the remaining enemies. Okay, yeah, we've got them all. I've never had a uh, Stromling be out of range of this aggro spot uh, in the early game, but I don't know. It might be possible. The only one which normally springs to mind for 
uh, or the the first place which regularly has enemies which end up out of range is wave um, six and the first spiderling. Not the first spiderling, I guess. That's the depending on how you count it, either the second or third um, in the run. Kind of depends which direction you're looking for or looking from. In most of these runs, it's going to be the third spiderling, solely because I don't aggro it very easily. Honestly, this is made so this game is made so much easier by the fact that I can by the fact that I don't de-aggro enemies whilst over here. Like, this would be so much harder if I did. Where's the spot? It's like here, isn't it? There we are. Yeah, so I just need to get a lot better at judging where I can and cannot throw from. So actually, I'll mess around with these guys just a little bit. So I back up to, what, here? Is it? No, not there. Where do I back up to? Where's the wall? It's the big invisible wall back here, right? Where? There we are. It's there, okay. What? No, something's... I'm confused. I feel lost. Why does it feel as though this wall's in a different position? It is. What's going... Wait. Either it's in a different position or I just found a way in and out of it. No, it's in a... Wait, what? Okay, so I'm... The reason I'm... I swear, I didn't I just make it in here, though? Okay, so you can actually get in and out of this wall. Okay. Did not realise that. I don't know if... I'm not convinced that's something you normally can do. There is a bug I have come across before. Okay, so this is the spot. So, okay, maybe... Maybe that isn't, but I, I, maybe that's just something I haven't noticed before that you could get in that way. But I have in the past had a couple of people get bugs where certain pieces of terrain are uh, unloaded. Okay, the idea is, can I just do that and then throw? And here there should be. That makes it easily, and there's a good amount of extra room. I could probably even do this from further back. Yeah, okay. I really don't need to push as far forward. So, the, re the what I'm checking out there is um, last time I lost runs to basically clumping up all the enemies uh, down where you saw them getting clumped up. I used to exactly that spot. Uh, and then when throwing the big one to take out the mechs, I the thing with the mechs is you've kind of got to be fairly quick about it. And so I kind of ran forward through it uh, but ran too far forward and fell off. Um, and, well, fell down into a horde of enemies and both times got uh, hit by an admiral. Okay, where's the spot? Here. I think I may have to just accept. Okay, no, I'm not gonna. This they should be walking towards me if I'm here. Okay, um, I just wanted to get all the mechs clumped up there. That's why I let myself take that bit of damage. Okay, I've just better shot at. There we are. 
Yeah, okay, I didn't have to get... Like, I was more or less here when I threw that. Cool. Okay. In principle, like, that should just make this a don't-do-anything-dumb run. Because, like, that was easy to do. In principle. And so, what I do also always have the option of doing is, even if all the mechs aren't there, I can just pick off some as they get there and then manipulate their AI to move uh, the others away. So, like, the reason I took damage there was because I was, uh, in, I was messing with, I was using that to kind of clump the AI. Um, I was doing that to try and clump the mechs up, but I don't actually have to do that. I don't need the mechs to be clumped up necessarily. I can just get the first max. Yeah, that's too far. I shouldn't be running that far. Yeah, so there, I didn't go for getting all the mechs in one go. Because there was no point to. It's a little bit better. Stuff which makes no sense unless, uh, well, and possibly even if uh, you're hearing the music. Oh, I had a very enjoyable jazz night last night. Um, so some friends... There's, there's a venue here where I... There's a jazz society I quite commonly go to. Um, it's just student run, um, and it's, it's really good fun. They normally have, they normally get a band on and then there's a jamming session afterwards and uh, that's not good. Let's not mess this up because I'm telling a story. Okay, there we are. And I am not good at, um, so uh, this don't know, I play the trumpet and I mess around on other instruments. Um, Let's not be dumb here. Yeah, uh, play the trumpet, mess around on some other stuff. Um, however, like I, my my teacher back when I first uh, was learning to play the trumpet, he is a very very good jazz trumpet player, um, very competent. Um, big band and it was always trying to get me into it and i i never i always loved playing in big bands just because i liked playing music with friends but i i never got very good at i i never learned how to improv i was always terrified of a solo and to and to and even a, a more general extent um i get it's really weird i get like i get stage fright really badly um when playing music um I don't get it, well, I mean, as it will probably not surprise you to hear, I don't get it when speaking. Um, like, I am perfectly comfortable. I really thought I would stun you. Um, like, I love public speaking, for instance. So it's, it, which, I mean, makes sense. YouTube channel. Um, But yeah, um, but yeah. So anyway, I, I used to, yeah. Oh god, I messed up so many solos <laughs> over the years. Um, uh, just like even so, even not improvised solos, even solos that like you know, I I prepared. It was classical music, some like stuff that I was very confident in my play. I uh, <laughs> traumatic. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So. I've recently started going to those, and for various reasons, I just decided, you know, let's actually, 
let, let's let's learn to do since I've been I've been going to those and say it's the, it was the same venue but uh some uh it was a a battle of the bands style thing so the um, multiple uh, multiple big bands playing really good fun I'm not in any because I am not I I am not quick at learning uh, new pieces. Which mean, which is always like once I've learned a piece, I will love playing in a band. But I always found it, I always found it really like not a hugely enjoyable experience to be to be the one holding everyone in the room up as the conductor's like, okay, no, can you go through and actually play the rhythms in that section? And my brain has just not internalize the rhythms yet like once i've internalized them heck yeah normally it takes like hearing them and listening through to them quite a few times basically i'm saying i can't sight read um the way i normally describe myself as a trumpet player is i am i'm a reasonably competent trumpet player i am not a i am a, a not a very good musician um it's kind of i've got the I've got like the physical trumpet playing down somewhat well. Um, I do not have the musical ability down at all. Um, but yeah, so um, so literally, so I was uh, I, I, I would have mentioned in the previous video I was uh, had a report I needed to submit um, on my uh, master's project, and so that had kind of been going on, and then in the evening. We were like, okay, let's let's do this. This Bass of the Bands thing sounds good fun. Um, and so, and, but I got a message from a friend who was playing in one of those bands, um, basically saying, hey, we're going to be doing a thing at the end where we get a, all the trumpet players to come up, um, and we're going to be playing uh, the piece Brass Machine. Um, can you do this? I was like, principal, yes, I can. It's a, I, I sat down and it's honestly the first time in rather a long time that I've just sat down and learnt some sheep. Oh, great. Where's the one remaining enemy? But yeah, it's been a very long time since I've actually just sat down and like... What? Where was that strumming? What? That makes no sense. Where did that guy come from? Unless, like, for whatever reason, he started, like, running around the back there? Oh, that, that weirds me out. Because, like, I started the round in the right position, if I recall correctly, at any rate, to aggro everything. But even if that guy hadn't, but like if that guy hadn't got an aggro, then then me coming down shouldn't have aggroed him. But even let's say it did, he was it felt like he was too close. Hmm, that weirds me. Uh, but yeah, um, so I so yeah went went up, uh, <laughs> played. Uh, yeah, first time in ages I've learned. I, so at school, I was always basically from when I I joined the the orchestra at school because they needed a trumpet player, um, and as a result, I was basically always trumpet one um, throughout most of the stuff I did at school. Is uh, trumpet one, trumpet two. Um, but they needed someone. Normally, they needed someone who could play the high notes. Why am I standing back? Well, I guess it's good practice to be standing back here. I don't need to for this. That was dumb. Yeah, you can... I've got to... Okay, that's muscle memory I need to unlearn. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, so it's good. I, like, for these two, which means I... I never got... Why did I just get shot from? Okay, Hello. Uh, which meant, yeah, I never got very good at learning to play harmonies or something like that. Like, I'm always used to, I'm always used to being the guy playing the melody line. Um, 
it takes so much less musical ability than being the one playing the harmonies. And maybe I backed... Okay, maybe that explains it. Um, and this, uh, whereas this, I basically... I just got sent some sheet music and I was like, okay. It was trumpet four, because let's face it, um, at school I managed to be quite good. By the point you get to uni and haven't then spent most of that time not playing, I yeah, I'm not hitting any high notes anytime soon. Um... But it also meant that I had to learn the harmonies for this piece. And it was it was fine. It turns out they didn't need us to do that in the end. Um, it turns out they literally just wanted us to play the melody line. So, fair enough. Um, good fun. Um, but yeah, uh, so they... So the, the, the main things ended and they're like, okay, and we decided uh, to do a... We decided to just uh, get all the trumpet players to come up, and it was hilarious because it was the phrase "out of the woodwork" has never like has never felt so accurate <laughs> because just like it's I I just remember friend loads it's like it's like a scene from the movie where you suddenly discover that like half the team's actually been infiltrated by the opposition or something um, because from the audience, like, I'd say 10, 12 people just started, all started filing out <laughs> just to go pick up instruments. They're like, okay, we've got a ton of, we've got some people in the audience with it and just everyone going about their daily lives. They were really undercut. They were really deep, deep cover trumpet players just looking for an opportunity. It was, it was funny. Um, yeah, we all went up, played. Uh, but what was quite funny is, um, yeah, they they didn't. I, I don't think they'd really anticipated how many people they had. So they had four four stands, etc., in quite a cramped space at the back. Um, and like four stands, twelve trumpet players. That is in principle enough, but. The stands were all very, very close together, so it ends up being roughly two people to a stand, which was fine for most of them. I ended up just being off at the very end. Um, and they were completely unable to see the music. And it was fine. It was it was all great vibes. Uh, but just, it was like, yeah, it was just hanging out, having fun. I don't think we were expected to be very competent. Well, I, I know for a fact we weren't expected to be very competent, given that one of the people was like, <laughs> as I was, I was chatting to as we were coming in, was like, yeah, no. I don't play the trumpet. I own a trumpet. I don't play the trumpet. <laughs> I've just been told to come here anyway. Um, so I don't think they were expecting much from us. And it was, it was, it was a very good time. It was very funny. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, one of the big things I've been looking into this year is getting better at getting better at doing dumb stuff in front of a crowd and realizing that actually you know what most of the time the crowd does not care what on earth it is you're doing um like i'm very very comfortable uh making a fool out of myself and being the butt of jokes with friends like it's a see it's a quick cheap self-deprecation is a quick cheap and easy source of humor um i find and so yeah that 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 all that all works out fairly well um but i am far far less comfortable with um i don't i don't want to say i'm far less comfortable doing dumb stuff in front of people that i don't know because no i'm actually like I, I also kind of enjoy that. It's kind of hard to say. I, I, I think I think the phrase is just social anxiety, right? I think that's probably the main. I don't know. It's a little bit weird because it's not... I don't know. It's, it's very specific circumstances, but I'm now, now that I'm trying to phrase exactly the circumstances, it's... I don't need to... No, no mechs left. Um, actually, there are no more mechs left in the entire game. Well, no more Stromling mechs. What? Uh, okay. Maybe there are. Maybe there are some I didn't aggro. I thought I'd got everything. Um, what round is this? 14. Yeah, there could be more, to be fair. Where? 
Where's this guy coming from? Yes, canonically in my head, this is the same guy who's messing with me each time. There's still one more enemy somewhere. I'm not accounting for. But yeah, so my aim for this year has been basically, okay, Ninja, you're just going to get a ton better at the whole. It's the, it's the classic thing that um, you, you get the super... Why am I... It's just muscle memory. I'm not meant to be going here. I guess I can. Um, but yeah, of like, I, you get the superpower to hear everyone's thoughts for a day and... You're really scared. You think it's going to be the worst superpower ever because ugh, they're all going to be thinking about you and judging you. Um, and then you realize that everyone was just worrying about all the stuff they'd just said. And they really, really didn't care about what you thought was a huge faux pas you just made. Um... <laughs> one of the one of the best experiences of... Uh... Of, of working on this was um we had one night where the jazz society did they they did essentially a uh, i don't know crossover whatever you want to call it uh with the poetry society at uni and essentially it was live readings of poetry um but they just would get like the, the jazz came in they just got the band to do jazz backing uh behind it and so like where soloing etc normally was it was just um where you'd normally go up for the jam session you didn't say just go up and just give backing to someone doing poetry which is pretty cool um however one of the people running the society um had and like yeah huge credit to this society like they had i would not be i would not have like tried any of this had it not been they had a they had an open jams oh no don't have much in the way of notion potions that's not great I literally just have four. That's really bad. <laughs> That's really bad. I guess... Hmm, I could, in principle, use the mic. Like, that's allowable. What's an everlasting consumable? Um, I think, anyway. Um, got some hiccup tablets hiccup tablets aren't they've got use cases for this actually okay right, well Oh, that's a lot of damage I've got to do. The thing is, I don't think I can even run back to pick up uh, Imagination. Hello? Uh, from one of... From one of the Smashables. No. Not like this. Okay. I do not want to lose a run to a quick build bug. That'd be incredibly annoying. But yeah, so for one of these... Yeah, so one of the people running the society had brought along something I'd never... Great, why is his health bugged? Brought along something I'd never... Okay, that's fine. I'd never heard of before. Um, a vocoder. 
Like, okay, no, that's a lie. When I say never heard of before, I have heard of it in the same way many of you have probably heard of those, which is, um, which is the YouTube videos, which is like, I don't know Family Guy. I think it's Peter Griffin, Peter Griffith, something like that, um, falling down the stairs, but vocoded to various songs. Um, so I've heard of it in that context, but essentially, he, he brought this thing and you sang into a mic, and, or you you spoke into a mic, and it would, um, it would essentially auto tune your voice live, and so he could be he was playing on the keyboard, and uh, you'd get to hear, and yeah, it would do the music thing. You know what I mean? Um, it would, yeah. You spoke into it, he'd play, and um, the speakers would then project your voice tunes to whatever it was he is playing really cool in the fact you could also do chords etc like i i think that's very cool but um anyway yeah the annoying thing about this was it was not great for like maintaining tombra or anything like that like you could not it was really hard to make out someone's words whilst they were using this which was not ideal for a poetry society um so basically None of them wanted to use it. That was dumb. And he died there. Um, and like we spent most of the most of the night with just occasionally just a reminder that uh, if you if you do want to be vocoded, um, we've got it, we've got it, we haven't had a chance to use it yet. <laughs> uh, and so uh, they they had like a couple of people who like said they'd got stuff prepared. Um, and like that was that was the first half of the evening where we'd normally have a band set, so that was just them doing that. And then in the second half of the evening, um, they had um, just you just um, they, they had people just <laughs> you put your name down, say okay, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do a reading. Oh, wasn't wasn't really planning on it, but yeah, I've got my phone, I've got some stuff on it. Um. Still no one's used the vocoder. And I'm at this stage. I'm feeling bad for Milo. He's gone to all the effort. Of, he's, he's brought his vocoder. He's... He's put time and effort into this. Um, let's... Let's do something incredibly dumb. Let's decide that I'm going to stand up in front of a room full of people without... With basically without any plan... <laughs> And attempt to freeform poetry just for the sake of giving Milo a chance to use a vocoder. I have... No one here has, like, ad-libbed at this stage anything. They've all, they've all read off something that they've got prepared. And, like, and it's been some brilliant poetry as well. And so I'm going up. I have never, ever attempted any kind of, like ad-libbing poetry. Why did I do that? That was dumb. That was dumb. Never attempted to ad-lib any kind of poetry in my life. Um, let's not mess this up quickly. Quick build that. This is not good. Just want to get... Oh no, this holds me in place. This holds me in place. No, quickly. Quickly, let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. Lots of those things you can jump and it will let you out. That one was not one of those. I don't even think... I did have this, but that won't help me. Each attack does... Oh, that's annoying. That won't help me. Each attack does five damage. He does three attacks. Three of those uh, ground pounding attacks. So there was no way I could have saved that. I don't think. Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be something like the funky horn. Which, to be fair, like, the, so the entire reason I've got the rule set I do for this challenge is the idea that you could... That this, this was essentially, this arose from just designing strategies which a player could do from the seconds they reached Nimbus Station. Um, 
But to be fair, I've got out of bounds routes you can use. Oh, I guess for a hard crow you character, maybe I don't. Oh, no, 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 that totally works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got out of bounds routes you can use for getting the uh, the imagination brick in uh, Nimbus Station without having to build the things. So let's be fair, you can just build the things. I guess you'd, if you're, if you don't have stuff for imagine, if you're, an, if player has just gotten here, maybe you can't quick build all the stuff easily enough. I don't know. You could probably do it with potions though. Hmm. I don't think they take that much imagination. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so it's probably feasible to have the funky horn uh, in these and that would have helped there. Because um, the funky horn, I only needed a small amount of imagination. Or the mug of yo. Although to be fair, this way the yo ho ho mug. But to get that, you need the imagination brick in Nald Forest. Which, why am I okay? Muscle memory at this stage. Or I guess not muscle. Me oh, I'm dead. I'm not dead. I should be dead. Hey, it's not muscle memory so much as autopilots here. Um, I'm probably dead. Okay, let's just... Oh, you can't hit me here. Oh. Why can't you hit me here? You can hit me basically everywhere. What's stopping you? And where's the final one of you? Ha! <laughs> That's kind of funny. Can I just... Climbing up the wall directly above me. But yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, so essentially I, I went <laughs> having no experience, basically no plan. Like I'd been vaguely thinking of like rough rhymes, but when I went up, they all went out of my head instantly. And like, as well, just to start, like, I, I hadn't processed that like, I just go up and start doing it and like, so I, my start was the most scuffed thing ever. It was, I think I rhymed like three times, maybe total in like, um, the 30 seconds I actually did. But, but I did <laughs> in the end, I, I feel, I feel I won the encounter. Um, because, uh, Essentially, I compl I was I I gave I gave my my load a complete setup to like okay yeah um I forget what it was I had a rhyme for Vakoda, but I I forget I forget what it was, um oh no 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 it was telling my it was some rhyming day it was rhyming something with take it oh no it was rhyming say I'm out of things to say so Milo take it away something like that um the only issue. So I forgot. I, have to, so I was like, okay, I'm giving you an opportunity to play a solo. Who'll have a great time? I forgot that I have to keep talking because the entire point of it was it's a for coder. It's codes your voice. It needs voice. <laughs> and at this stage, I have completely used up anything I have to say, and so I I brought out my backup plan, uh, which is the backup plan I've had for every. Uh, jazz society event I've been to where I've done a solo, which is I've brought along a kazoo uh, for the entire reason that no one expects anything of a guy holding a kazoo. Um, and so when being completely out of anything else, yeah, I, I he ended up recoding the kazoo, which was one of the weirdest things, I think. But yeah, so I went out and did freeform poet did like freestyle poetry whatever um then played the kazoo at a room full of people <laughs> and for uh any average jazz enjoyers out there i also played the lick at them um which are uh, honestly the the lick being such a meme in like in, in the kind of the I don't want to say I don't want to say internet jazz culture because I'm not qualified to talk about that I know nothing about what internet jazz culture actually is I know like the I know musical meme culture um, 
but um ow 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 hello there um I, i'm out of range for anything here i think pretty certain yeah it's fine okay um but yeah i unfortunately like the lick has i think done permanent damage um i now because i'm so used to hearing that snuck into things like, I was listening to a cover of, um, Through the Fire, the, uh, uh, Miranda Brothers' accordion cover of Through the Fire and the Flames. By Dragon Force. Or originally by Dragon Force, covered by Miranda Brothers. Um, and partway through, there's, like, they're messing around a lot. There's some, like, I think Libertango or something like that, um they go into in the middle of it like it's it's a very uh, fun uh, somewhat tongue-in-cheek cover and then at one point he plays the full mario kart lick and i am like it takes me listening through a couple of times like did he just i swear i've heard that before wait was that no surely not and then yeah no it, it just was um and so now now i'm just hearing in like any any somewhat like not a hundred percent serious piece of music on YouTube, I am just expecting the lick. I'm just everywhere. I just expect it, and I'm now hearing it everywhere <laughs> because I'm expecting it everywhere. This is actually this has done damage. I'm not the same carefree ninja I once was. Okay, I've now completely forgotten how I died. Oh no, I remember how I died last time. Okay. <laughs> I say I'm, I'm meant to be learning from this, but it doesn't happen if I've forgotten how I died the previous time. Yeah. No more enemies, right? Uh, do we have one or two? We have one spiderling, so the other one spawned out back. Okay. Oh no, it's round five. One spiderling. Well, we have. Where's the remaining enemy then? Uh, to be fair, I didn't... I don't think I ran the full way down at the start. So. Yeah, okay. I'm back. Fair enough. Okay, so... The idea, if, I, if I'm not an idiot, is that... In principle, there shouldn't be too many opportunities for me to lose this run. Um, there are, like, a couple of key things I have to pull off, but if I do pull them off, like, I should be fine. Is the idea. Um, like, the King of Hellfight, for it, to be fair, King of Hellfight is not one of those things. The King of Hellfight is something that should be a given. Um, because it, he's easy. He's time-consuming. He's incredibly annoying. Very time-consuming. But he is not a difficult fight. Oh, heal up. This isn't... That's not 100% necessary. But I'm... I'm not using... Much in the way of healing items. Uh, with this new strategy. So, I figure I'm fine to... Use a couple... You know, that's the story of uh, the increasingly dumb things I've done in an attempt to work on social anxiety, etc. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's the word. I, I always feel bad saying that because it's one of those things where, like, I don't know. It feels like it's a very, very specific set of circumstances I kind of have issues with. And, like, I know I have absolutely... Like compared to friends who have anxiety, other reasons. I know I've, I know I've, like, I do not have any issues. Um, that was yeah, so dumb. I should not have. Wait. Uh, okay, we've got the guy spawning in over there. Then I guess. 
Oh, yeah, okay. Well, that wasn't a dumb jump to do then. One spidling over in this corner. There we are. Honestly, the fake wall here does get me. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll just... This is unnecessary, so I don't need this to fire... Actually, no, I'll just... That's the kind of thing I can very see myself can very easily see myself doing and screwing up and dying. Um, like also, for instance, uh, doing the Merkle Blotch fight because I can save this fight. There is a perfectly safe strategy, but it's boring. <laughs> I don't need to run around there. There's no collision. Three hits to go. No, I could die. No, nope, not dying. Cool. It's always nice. Wait, can you not? So they're just a barrier though. Can you can definitely run there? Cool. Good to know. Just got a message from one of my friends asking why Lush is doing Mario and Luigi Shao Chow. I don't know why Lush is, why Lush is doing Mario and Luigi Shao. Well, no, I do know why Lush is doing Mario and Luigi Shao Chow. It's because Mario released, Nintendo released a movie and... Question mark, question mark, question mark, profit, question mark, question mark, question mark. I have not used this jump in. Like, I've forgotten where you even go for it. Because I've just not had to. There's, like, no, no part of my strategy now which requires that. Oop, hello, lag. What's, what's going on? I mean, something very weird happened there. Don't know what it was, and I could die. Okay, so that's that's a perfect example of me doing dumb stuff because I get bored. Also, my screen, I it's not... It's not that my there's that my screen's dark or that my screen's not the right brightness. Well, I mean to be fair, there's a bit of oh, if I tilt the screen up, it gets a lot better. Huh. Okay. Um, okay, well, it's actually tilting it down, but if I tilt the screen, it gets better. Also, I okay. The thing I'm most pleased with is I have not messed up that upwards clip there in a good while. Like I've pulled that off pretty consistently. Where is it? It's here. Honestly, this spot is just so good. So to explain for anyone, I guess, who didn't see the previous video. Um, 
I've not realized there's that many things down there. Um, yeah, essentially the idea uh, is that like the hello there, spiderling. Ow. Uh, yeah, the, the idea behind this run is that best case is that essentially what I want to spend all my time doing is manipulating enemies into places where I can hit them and they can't hit me. Easiest way of doing that, um, given the way the big one works, is getting somewhere. So the, the nice thing about the big one is it has a, like it's got nearly infinite range, I think. Like the projectile lifetime is pretty large because it's because of the fact that it falls. Um, yeah, so the devs kind of like, well, you can't get that high up, uh, which means as a result that as long as you're throwing something downwards, you can throw it about as far as you like. Um, and so the idea basically is that the player can jump, enemies can't jump, therefore I can get into places uh, the enemies can't climb. And uh, in this, um, like mechs of Ankhan survival fly, Nothing flies in Battle Nimbus Station, which is incredibly useful. So yeah, as a result, the aim is essentially, it's just to get enemies stuck, basically. And it's still one more. Okay, so that's what confuses me. Where does that guy come from that he wasn't aggroed at the start it's coming from like along there i i don't think i like i was here when everything had spawned in does he take like the certain do enemies not all spawn in simultaneously maybe because like i was chased out of this boat like, i hit the bottom area but then got chased out by a spiderling and that guy was aggroed when i was further up the hill i don't know what's happening oh, i'm not paying any attention It's fine. It's nothing. No admiral there to one shot me. So it, it's fine if I don't aggro everything in one go as well. Like I can just do two runs of this. But as you probably begin to see at this stage, the limiting factor with this is not necessarily like. Essentially, the way I've done this is I've tried to. Rather than rather than getting better at a bad strategy, I've just tried to come up with better and better and easier and easier strategies to pull off. Um, essentially, I like th uh, theory crafting rather than grinding something that's uh, harder. I prefer to just find something that's easier. But yeah, so the idea is essentially the main issue. Um, so yeah, I can, the, the 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 real aim of the way this the way this route is designed uh, is you want to yeah you want to get enemies into a position where you're much higher than they are. Where's the where are the remaining enemies? So that. They can technically get stuck in that rock face over there. I may have to check whether they are there. But, I mean, for whatever reason, we've seen these guys have a tendency to just... What? I was looking so up for you. Um, okay, where's the last remaining? Is it a is it someone over in that corner up there? Let's take a look. It's yeah, it could either be a rock face incident or something in this corner. I'm hoping it's something in this corner because that's okay, that's far easier to deal with. 
rock face stuff is annoying. Rock face stuff is annoying, but fortunately it basically doesn't happen anymore. Um, I think it was essentially the old route I used to mess with um, meant that they could get stuck there. But now it basically just doesn't seem to happen, so that's quite nice. Wow, it's been a while since I've... No, not like this. Come on. Ugh. Oh, this is annoying. Um, yeah. I guess I, if I touched the ground slightly before I... Oh, no, if it, it couldn't have been the ground. It must have been the, the platform I touched slightly earlier than I anticipated. Or I just touched it all. Therefore, I entered falling state, and therefore I lost control of my character. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Mostly because it means I've got to go through the early game again. <laughs> and as we've established, repetition causes ninjas to make mistakes. <sighs> because they get bored. I don't want to do the early game again. I just want to get straight to the late game bit. Why Why do I do consistency challenges? <laughs> the real question here. Because um, this is literally just a challenge of I need to do something which I find in principle easy over a period of... I mean, you would have seen there my last... My last run was, what, like 76 minutes? Actually, that's... Uh, probably was an actual run, right? It, it might not have been, but I think it most likely... Because, like, there are times when I've done practice runs where I've allowed myself, uh, like, uh, extra items. But most of those I do on uh, Ninja of OU. Hello there. That was less than I did. What is wrong with me? Why am I unable to... Uh. But yeah, anyway, would hugely recommend uh, adding randoms adding doing random things like that to one's diet um of activities or right, adding yeah because uh, like those are those are things i those are like so unnatural things for me to do like going out playing solos um that stupid poetry thing like It's, those are like so unnatural actions for me. Um, but that's kind of what makes them... Like, that's what makes them good is the fact that... Oh, that's what makes them great memories. <laughs> it's the fact that's like, what the heck I did? I did freestyle po Like, what? No. No, that's, that's not me. Um, that's... Uh, But like that's what makes it a good memory because I do stuff that's I do stuff that's obviously me on a day to day basis because I am me. Um, like it's not it's not going to be as surprising that I or as great a memory that oh I spent today doing a good amount of physics. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I spend most days doing. That's, that's my degree. That's what my job's going to be, <laughs> or at least for the foreseeable future. Assuming grades turn out somewhat well. I I do quite enjoy the fact that I'm not... I am, like, barely processing um, certain parts of this, which is very helpful. Honestly, um, 
like I, I, I don't know. I feel these runs are somewhat easier if I'm like easier if I'm recording my voice. Reason being just that I'm at least okay. I know I'm not. There's no. There's none of the feedback loop of talking to actual people uh, in real time. But like, it's still, it at least keeps me somewhat engaged or like not getting, it reduces my boredom. Like I'm, I'm not making this sound <laughs> very much fun. But to be fair, like I, I don't find this. Uh, I don't find the actual, like completing this fun. I find the routing really, really good fun. And I enjoy the sense of satisfaction I get when I complete this. The actual action of doing boring thing repeatedly um, in order to get the successful attempt. Now that's boring. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, there's a good amount of that even in rooting, etc. Because there's a huge amount of doing doing random stuff that you think might be interesting without finding thing that actually is interesting. So having a chat with someone, uh, someone in Discord about this the other day, and I realized it's probably not something I've discussed on here in a while. Uh, the reason I, or the, I don't know, I see, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I've not really, not really discussed this too much, but I see like huge parallels. I mean, I am not the first person to discuss this. Obvious citation would be um, Bismuth. Uh, the YouTuber Bismuth gave a talk on... Um, I don't remember the words, so I'm just going to go with um, speedrunning as a gateway drug uh, for science. But, like, I do think there is... I do think there is quite strongly something to be said about that. Like, I'm using... The, uh, I'm using very similar skills when I do this to, like, when I do when I come up with um, new ideas in physics. And it's very, very much the same feeling. Um, now, the only thing is that it happens far, far, far more often that I come up with new ideas here than I come up with original ideas in physics because far more people care about physics than do about Lego Universe. But that's honestly kind of why I enjoy this. It's basically that <laughs> I see... I see me doing this as essentially physics, but easy mode. Like, because the the underlying processes are essentially the same. You've got some understanding of some like basic understanding of the game, and that's. I mean, to begin with, here it's the tutorial in Avant Gardens. Your game is uh, basically whatever Patrick Stewart tells you. So, press the arrow keys to move. Press space to jump. Press space twice to double jump. Whatever. Um, and you've got like you've got like a basic understanding and that's your existing it's equivalent to your existing physical theory and then you want to i don't know you want to make something different you want to make the world a minorly better place and so how do you go about doing that well you have two options either you take the existing knowledge and apply it in a new way i'd say that's engineering um, or you come up with a new theory. And that doesn't have to be as well. That doesn't have to be new physics. I've, t I've discussed um, my thoughts on particle physics on the channel at some point. And like, okay, it's a bit of a meme. I'm I'm in the condensed matter physics bubble. We do joke about hating the, the particle physicists. Um, I... Like this is it is it is it is it is a joke. I as a field, I am I am still not convinced by its usefulness. But to some extent, it's it's more physics than any physics I will do in my life. Um, because you, there are kind of two definitions you can go for with physics. You can either go for um, it is it is the act 
of coming up with the as the act of working out the underlying physical or the underlying I don't want to say physical in the definition but the underlying laws which describe the universe it's the act of coming up with a minimal set of laws which describe the universe I could have died there that was dumb um I really should save this because yeah it is I'm 10 minutes into the run at this point I shouldn't be taking risks honestly that's not bad I can re aggro him from here um uh, what was I pontificating I know but I'm, I'm always doing that um Honestly, I've not used this spot in a while. I don't use this spot because uh, you uh, max, you can't manipulate as easily with it. I guess I never finished discussing the whole mech thing. Ah, there's too many topics. Um, essentially, there's nowhere I can get out of range of mechs and still hit them. However, I can kind of clump them up quite nicely, which is what I try to do. Um, that's what that spot allows me to do. Yeah, and so the... Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, if you say physics is the act of coming up with... Um, with new minimal theories to describe the universe. So essentially, you try and come up with the minimal set of axioms you need to predict the entire behavior of the universe with 100% accuracy then uh okay let's not say with 100% accuracy the minimal set of things you need such that's giving such the minimal set of laws such that given infinite computational power and infinite time you could compute the time evolution of the of of any system infinitely accurately um like that's 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 one definition of physics and so and that's kind of your that's the definition where particle physics operates uh condensed matter physics which is kind of more where i'm at um is essentially it's the question of all right we we have in principle we have the maths to describe um like in day-to-day -day life particle physics does not really make a difference um or rather an understanding of particle physics doesn't it doesn't change a huge amount it's the reason being that we just that there's a reason that we need the lhc to observe particle physics if we didn't need the lhc to observe particle physics then or the lhc the large hadron collider why do we notice of sudden silence in this album? Um, oh, no, is that because I turned it down? No, it's just silence. Okay. Um, yeah, the reason we need the reason we need the uh, large hadron collider is because um, you it's the only way you can access, or at least the only way we've yet to come up with, to access the energy scales at which particle physics is important. Um, and by important, I mean makes a significant, uh, has enact a significant change from our existing understanding. Um, in the language of gaming, I guess that's probably, that's saying that it would be nice, it would be nice to uh, have a tutorial somewhere in the game that says that... Uh, the two-handed weapons you get from uh, from what is it Achilles Plutarch is that the guy's name I don't remember um, from the sent from the from you you know the sent sentinel guy that sells the really expensive two-handed weapons it would be really nice to have so like to have a complete understanding of the game you need to know that those weapons aren't worth it. Um, or I'm, I'm being slightly glib but you a complete understanding of the game 
entails knowledge that those weapons do not, by default at any rate, certain servers have uh, modded this differently, but those weapons do not give you AoE. For instance, that is a piece of game knowledge which is important. Um, however, it's only important late game. Like, that, unless you have a certain level, that knowledge is irrelevant. It does not describe anything relevant to your gameplay experience whatsoever. And like, and by the same token, the only way you can find that out is by, like, essentially there's the idea that, um, that's the only stuff which is relevant is the stuff uh, to a certain, to a, well, okay, again, this is, the only stuff which you can predict as being relevant to a certain area is the stuff which, hello there. I mean, it does, I don't actually need to heal up because this guy will one-shot me if he hits me, so. But the only stuff which you can guarantee will be relevant, and which is particularly likely to be relevant, um, is the stuff which you can experimentally, which is relevant to, like, practically being usable in a certain regime, is the stuff that you can experimentally measure in that same regime. So, i.e., the knowledge, knowledge about um, that, that high-level gear, is only relevant knowledge once you have a certain number of coins and a certain level. It is not, it's not something you can test out until you have those coins in that level, because um, you can't buy those. Um, and it's something which isn't useful knowledge until you have those coins in that level. Or at least until you have the capacity to get those coins and to reach that level, I guess, to be fair. Um, yeah, and so particle physics is kind of it's, it's a similar vein. It may well one day provide us with a far deeper and a far simpler knowledge uh, and understanding of the underlying universe. Uh, that is very, very... That's, that's possible. I, 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 wonder, I wonder how simple the mod, uh, model actually can get. I wonder what language changes we're going to have to make before... Um, I wanted to, yeah, okay, no, that, that's, that's a discussion about Kormagorov complexity, and this is not the time for that. Um, hello. Uh, so, some guy over there again, okay, sure. But yeah, so the, the key idea for me is, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, so particle physics um yeah that, that's that's kind of the that's kind of the idea the reason um why condensed mass physics teases because we don't need to dis like particle physics is in many ways um we ha i don't want to say it's irrelevant for describing day-to-day -day life but we have models which describe day-to-day -day life perfectly well now we don't have the reasons necessarily why those models hold and knowing why those models hold, that that could well give rise to some new technologies and some really interesting stuff. That is in principle possible. However, in general, I don't know. It's in general that doesn't seem it doesn't it, it seems very unlikely that it's, it feel essentially it feels like in order to we need to be we need to be able to in order to have something which impacts our daily life we need to be able to see something to have a an understanding impact our daily life the thing we don't understand needs to should be able to be seen from our daily lives etc um and it's the same reason I'd argue I like general relativity hasn't made it like there there, is, there are differences which have been made by it so for instance i mean the classic obvious uh thing to discuss with general relativity is gps um because that relies on very precise timing etc and so general relativity has actually been important for that and therefore we do observe it in our day-to-day -day lives but stuff like that's that's a particular limit of general relativity that's um I'm trying to remember because I've, I've done this calculation. That's the like low curvature limit of general relativity. Um, 
and I say you do some matching of like you work out how the metric tensor produces forces and you work out well okay the metric tensor that pro or produces apparent forces and the met gravitational forces and the metric tensor that produces the force of gravity is the same like has to be by some constraints the same metric tensor which produces uh yeah the, it, it's the same that that metric ten tensor also has to produce um gravitational time dilation or whatever and so like technically you're still you're not getting any higher order correction terms to gravity uh with that like approximation in general relativity so you're using you they use general relativity to link uh gravitational forces and time dilation you don't use it to predict changes to the gravitational force and so like outside of that limit i don't actually think general relativity has seen practical applications i could be wrong I, I don't know a ton about this um like it has applications in imaging stars um it has applications in seeing stuff but i don't think it's had any uh like purely earthbound applications um like you don't need it to get to the moon for instance i mean that's not even earthbound but um But yeah, so at any rate, so I don't know, that's, that's kind of my discussion of, like, I feel mostly we don't have too many experiments where we think we don't have the tools to describe them. However, we have tons of experiments we can't explain. Like, that's, we have so many experiments we can't explain. So the question is, like, we, we think we understand day-to-day -day life. No, not like, not again. Why does that keep happening? Okay, I need to, when I fail a jump there, I need to run back in further and, like, get completely on the ground because I think something's happening. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm messing up there regularly. Uh, is this? Oh, this is the, this is the safe round. Looks like it. Okay. Um, to be fair, like, 12 is also a safe round, isn't it? Is it 12? It might be 11. That's the safe round. I don't remember. So whichever one you get all the spidlings on. Uh, like the five. Is it five spidlings? Six spidlings? I think it might be six. I don't remember. Probably five, actually. But anyway, so then, then you have condensed matter theory, which is essentially the statement that, all right, we think quantum mechanics pretty much describes everything in our lives. Um, and we, we don't really think there's, like, in day-to-day -day life, that you may, particle physicists may one day come up with a better explanation for quantum mechanics, but we've still not seen anything which directly contradicts quantum mechanics. However, there's still stuff we can't explain. How do you get, to, like, if we think we've got the physical laws, but we get stuff we can't explain, like, that seems like a bit of a contradiction. The reason this isn't a contradiction is just because we have... An equation doesn't mean that we can solve it. In particular, I can, in principle, describe an uh, like describe an equation which would predict precisely the time evolution of the table in front of me, or of this desk I'm using, uh, to be more precise. Now, this desk. How much does it? tonight i'm i was gonna say how much does it weigh um but then i realized that actually i've never like actually worked out how to judge weight <laughs> i'm never very good at this um so i don't know let's say it's i don't know 10 20 kilograms probably not it's probably not a hundred kilograms and it's not one kilogram so let's say on the order of 10 kilograms a okay, 10 kilograms, that's what, 10,000 grams. 10,000 grams is what, 10,000 moles of carbon. I'll say the table is probably mostly carbon. 10,000 moles of carbon, that is 
what this 602 times 10 23 let's see so that's let's just take a look where are you coming from what like where where did this okay um yeah, so that's what uh, ten thousand moles of carbon. A mole is uh, six times ten to the twenty-three atoms. So that's what six times ten to the twenty-seven atoms in this table. In principle, I can write an interacting Schrodinger equation for this table. Um, and in principle, the answer we get, like if if you could solve that equation. There would be there would be things which are incorrect. You're going to like nuclear interactions will cause some issues, and those are relevant questions to particle physics. However, you, they just don't cause many issues. The issues they cause are absolutely tiny. Like they don't cause they don't cause any practical problems. Um, it's not something it's not something you'd notice. Um, Specifically, you would get anything you could, more or less, I think, practically hope to measure without a particle collider would be explained by that. Um, I guess maybe maybe there are some arguments that actually with that many particles, maybe you would expect to observe. To be fair, yeah, you probably would expect to observe different concentrations of different isotopes and you would expect to observe some decay. So if you could make any measurement on it, you probably would see some non-negligible amount of radiation coming from the table. Um, what's the radiation that increases um, proton number? It's going to be what? That's uh, beta decay. So you'd probably see some amount of beta decay from this, I guess. So you'd probably observe some electrons coming off that, I guess, as you... If you have some carbon, you'll have some non-negligible proportion of carbon-13... Um, I'm assuming carbon-13 goes as beta decay, because my, my general rough rule of thumb is that I know iron is, like, the most stable thing. And therefore, things like, so have 26, um, 26 protons, and therefore carbon-13 is going to try and increase its proton number. Um, and therefore, I want to go beta decay, which increases proton number, rather than alpha decay, which decreases proton number. Um... However, to be fair, that's not that's not necessarily that guarantees that like typically isotopes of carbon under some average will try to increase their proton number. It doesn't actually say what any given isotope of carbon will do. Um, so I'm still wrong probably um I, I don't know i i don't know much of it about uh even nuclear physics to be fair and yeah But yes, yeah, so condensed matter physics comes in essentially in just trying to trying to answer those questions, trying to take a look at. And so that's why I say arguably it's not as true physics as particle physics, because we already do have the quantum theory. Like I'm trying to answer questions about quantum mechanics, essentially. I'm ignoring the particle physics of this table and I'm just trying to answer the quantum mechanical questions. But we already technically do. We understand differential equations. We, we do have the maths to in principle, with an infinitely good computer, we, we could answer these questions. Um, my argument kind of is that we can have equations to describe something and still not understand it. And I'd argue that, rather, that physics is, rather than the process of building up a complete description, it's the process of building up a complete understanding. And I think those are two subtly different but still very different if you're listening along with me i've just restarted the album um i yeah i i don't think that the difference is necessarily obvious unless you've tried to solve particular differential equations um that like certain things just don't have solutions um 
and that's even what we mean when we say has a solution is fairly arbitrary divide um like we count trigonometry as being elementary functions they still we can't practically evaluate those without um i was gonna say without infinite power series that's not true uh, there are better algorithms i guess All right, yeah, you've got you've got full on rambling ninja at this stage. But I'm sure that's what you're used to. If you're if you are watching this, you're probably fully expecting that. Um, this is why I I should really if I if I if I knew what topic I was going to be chatting about, I should just write a notes document that just says okay things you want to discuss, and then I can just look back to that, and then I don't get caught up in this train of oh, I'm discussing one thing. But yeah. I think I was just trying to, I don't remember why, but I think I was just trying to, like, define condensed matter physics. Um, and kind of, yeah, why I'm interested in that. I don't know, there was probably a reason for it. But I don't remember. I think it was, I remember I mentioned PhDs, etc. That was, like, discussing career part. I don't remember why I was doing that. Oh, I was link between link between physics and uh, studying games. Yeah, and why I think yeah, why I think they're very similar. Um, it's the idea. Yeah, okay. It's it's the idea that yeah, the reason I do the reason I do physics is so that I can predict things which can have a useful impact or which. Not which can have a useful impact, but which may one day have a useful impact, which is something worth noting. And I, that's kind of an argument often made about particle physics. I just so I went to CERN once, and when I went to CERN, they kept like whenever trying to justify why why we should spend money on CERN, they kept giving the example of the internet. And that weirds me out so much. It's like, yes, you, you are entirely correct. The internet was invented at CERN. However, why? There's no reason a priori why, like, you, why the internet was invented at CERN and not, say, at Bell Labs. Okay, maybe there are some, some reasons, I guess. Maybe Bell Labs just being a bit more commercial, etc. But, like, there's no reason that's... It's a very good reason why, like, unexpected technologies are a great reason why we should uh, invest spec money speculatively into sci science. Because we do know that we do get, that if you cultivate the right sort of environment, you do get useful things. Um, however, I'm, like, I'm still not convinced that that's a, that's, that's an argument why we should invest in speculative science, but I still feel like we can invest in speculative science, which has more, which actually has a likelihood of practical applications. And I guess to be fair, so I'm, I will have a tendency to rag on uh, the moon mission, for instance, and uh, the space race, etc. Because I don't know that was a, that was a lot of money going to. There was a lot of money going to something, and the act of being on the moon, we had no reason to assume it would do anything useful whatsoever. All right, now I've actually got to pay attention for a second. Because ideally I get out of bounds before... Um, No, 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 no. I want to get out of bounds before the next wave starts. I'm now panicking. I, I've never... I've never not been out of bounds by the start of this wave. Ooh! That was kind of fine. Like, in principle... Okay, so, yeah, I, I was mentioning earlier sticking points of this uh, challenge and strategy. That's one of them. Um, is getting out like that's potentially where you could run into issues. I, I do have a backup plan if I can't get out of bounds. 
um but it's it's difficult like the idea if i can't get out of bounds is i just whittle down enemy numbers um until i'm left with one uh one hammer stromling and at that point i treat it as though it's a single normal stromling the issue is that it's really hard to whittle down to just one hammer stromling um that's not it's not an easy thing to do with the big one given it's aoe um and yeah if they're all clumped up i will if if two of those hit me at once i die essentially so in order to be able to tank a hit from the remaining enemies whilst i'm trying to get out of bounds there i need to get down to just one hammer stromling essentially um either that or i clump clump all of them up into one place and just don't get hit it is in principle an option but it's not an easy option to pull off anyway the idea is from this point onwards from this point until the final round the game should in principle be easy i should only die by stupid mistakes essentially i i, I shouldn't die hello um However, the fact that I should only die to stupid mistakes is what makes them all the more likely. <laughs> That's quite the discussion to it. That would have been. Honestly, I think I have died so many times during discussions of dang is only stupid mistakes now that I should die to. Like, I don't think that's an uncommon thing in various challenges I've done over the years. Just taking a drink. There's no real need to rush to smashing these guys. Might as well wait until they're all here. There was, however, a rush to getting down there. And I was too busy drinking. Oh, well. No, actually. Ah, I was gonna try and. Okay, it seems roughly clear. I was going to try and quickly get a quicksicle there because I do have seven in my inventory at the moment, if I recall correctly. Speaking of my inventory, there I should move back to this. So it's quite nice having this many healing items, despite the fact I don't actually use too many. This is kind of. I had all these from previous runs where I took a lot more damage. Oh, why am I why am I messing this up? I I'm now getting in my own head about it is kind of part of the issue. But yeah, you can see why they say in principle everything should be easy from here on out. I literally aggro everything. The strongly mech invaders cannot hit me. I am perfectly safe from them. So the Essentially, the only way I should be dying, the only way I can really die is if I mess up aggroing at the start, or if I mess up that jump around the corner there. Those are the only two things that should be able to kill me. Now I just... Do I bother waiting for that second mech? Or do I just bum rush it? Sorry, the third mech. I guess I'll wait. Anyone here seen the film Wanted? It is. I, if you're a younger viewer, I would not. Uh, this is not a film for you. Um, it's it's not a. It's not a particularly bad film, but it's somewhat it has it, it has bits of gore. Um, Uh, yeah, uh, we watched it as a group the other day, myself and my friends, and okay, um, 
And at the end, it just... It just goes right for a... Like, right for the jugular. The main character stares into the camera and asks what you've done today. It's like, that's uncalled for. Absolutely nothing but revision as of that particular day, if I recall correctly. Um, actually, it probably wasn't revision, it was report writing then. But I don't need to be... It's not, it's not coming here to be outed like that. Excuse me, what the heck? Is it... Wait, was that two hits? I had it in my head, those were three. I'm not going to complain. Yeah, so... Previously, I used to have a reasonable amount, a number of stats memorised for uh, damage of certain enemies and like their attack patterns so uh, specifically like elite dark spidlings i i don't know if i ever actually made it far enough that i hit elite dark spidlings i know i never made it to whack blido um however n now i really don't need to worry about attacks or lit basically all i care about at the moment is uh an enemy's aggro range uh, it's diagro range and uh, it's attack range. And essentially, I only care about whether the attack range is enough that they can get me from down there. There's only one enemy which can get me from down there, and it's a strongling mech. Um, so, essentially, I just care about whether enemy is strongling mech or not. I guess, yeah, and um, aggro range. But the only enemy which has a problematic aggro range are the four horsemen at the very end of the game. Those are the ones where if we get that far, that's where the difficulty really starts to set in, is in how I deal with those. Um, because I don't have a plan for them. Uh, if, if we get there, those are ad-libbed. Most... Well, they're, they're, okay, they're not ad-libbed. I have looked at... I think I've got a strategy for one of them. And I can, in principle... Yeah, they're going to be hard, basically. I'm everything else I'm convinced that I should be able I'm convinced that I've got strategies which can beat it the four horsemen I am not convinced by that at all okay so elite dark spiderlings are four is that then For these, it's seven damage per hit, right? Uh, wave 22, Whack Blido, I'm assuming. This is where it would be useful to be streaming this, but I'm well aware that <laughs> I do not, that as a student, I can stream at times which most other people will not be around for. Um, Especially, like, time differences don't help out either um, here. Time zone differences. Uh, because, like, US people aren't going to... It's the wrong way around. For um, midday for British people. Um, and it's probably midnight Australia. Um, which is uh, not everyone. It's a large proportion of like the m like purely English speaking world. And it's not purely English speaking world. like that being the main that that being the like single national language. I don't know if that is actually to be fair. The single national language for the uh, for Australia and the US. To be fair, it might not be for the UK. I, I don't know what counts as a national language. Uh, no, I no, I don't get distracted. That's why I forgot it's why I forgot it. Um. Okay, that's fine. I'm in aggro range. Uh, what do I? I think I just yeah. I don't think I do anything special here. I 
think I'll just go for this. Yeah, it's fine. I'm very lucky um, that this terrain works out quite the way it does. Because they're... Because... Okay, let's not... I don't think Whack Blido can one-hit me. To be fair, I don't think she can one-hit me from full health. Might be able to... Um, might be able to from full health. I don't remember. I seem to recall that King of Hurl was the last thing that could potentially one-shot me. However... Uh, that's that's essentially like damage in one hit. There are classes of enemies which can do kind of multiple hits instantaneously. Specifically, I'm thinking about the horsemen. Horsemen are not an issue. For the four horsemen, the four horsemen themselves are such a huge issue. They could run. They could run my end. So they could end my run in so many different ways. Also, this is just going to be tedious. So we just get... We just get used to the fact that I'm going to be pressing 5 repeatedly for the next few minutes. I don't know if Mike Blue has more or less health than King of Hell. Probably. Yeah. It's... I could find that out. I could just check in the database. Um... But it would require me guessing their IDs destruct and going via destructible components, which could do. But it's good. if they were just if it were just there in the objects table, I probably would. But because that would just require me getting the database up and then typing their names. Um, that wouldn't be. That wouldn't be me. Me. Like, or like essentially, you don't want to see just a. Blank screen. Well, you wouldn't be seeing a blank screen. You'd be seeing me standing here watching. That's boring. Um, let's just actually double check that. Yes. Okay, I am recording LU right now. I was recently... I was recently editing uh, a project report for a friend. Or, well, not editing, but uh, going over, providing feedback, etc. Reviewing it. And uh, the way I tend to do that is I tend to uh, just record a live video of me be going through it um, just because uh, I could I could write down a ton of comments but like there's always there's context to whatever comment I'm writing down um, like I may have misinterpreted something Like, or there may be something that I considered writing down, then didn't. Still over half health? Dang it. Actually, it's probably not over half health. So, one thing, um, which I've mentioned before, I haven't mentioned recently, health bars now you aren't linear. I don't know what the function they obey is, though, actually. I've never looked into that. I just know that when it looks like it's at halfway, it's under halfway. And that you seem to take off a lot more damage right at the very end. However, I probably mean that as a fraction. And so it could just be that there are some offsets. It's some affine function rather than a linear function. It's interesting that when I say a linear function or a linear operator, I mean it obeys a I mean it obeys the property that f of a times x equals a of f times x. Which ironically, a straight line y equals mx plus c only obeys when c is equal to hello there turned around randomly, uh, which only obeys when c, c is equal to zero. So I, what I say is a linear function is actually only straight lines which pass through the origin. Um, it's not all lines. 
and kind of interestingly there is a historical reason for, they're, they're like there is a reason for this which is that linear linear maps are line preserving uh i they map straight lines to straight lines i'm now just double checking this in my head whether or not that might i'm pretty certain that's true <laughs> i'm pretty certain i'm not making that up um Yeah, I think I could know how I'd write a proof on that if I had to. Let's actually just do that quickly. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Uh, what comes next? I'm just getting rid of stuff that I won't use. Let's just free up inventory space. Cool. But the thing is, I won't be able to get that loot before it despawns, will I? I should probably move it to a position where I, should, where I can see, because if I recall correctly, we get Ronin quite a lot, yeah. And Ronin are actually... They are, I think, some of the fastest enemies. They always seem to be on my tail and be very annoying. So I'm not... Not going to... Take them too lightly. See what I mean? Like, if, that, if they were a ranged enemy, they would be killing me right there. Fortunately, they're not. But, like... They essentially... They either kept off me. I wonder if they actually outrun me. It might be the same speed as Stromlings, to be fair. I don't know, because I never look behind me when I'm down there. All I know is that no ranged enemies can catch up with me. Um, it could be that actually there are tons of enemies which catch up with me and I just never notice it. Hurry up. Yeah. Should be two hits, probably. I think we're in the two hits. Yep. Is there anything still here? I shouldn't be doing this, but... <sighs> Nothing going right. Um... Okay, yeah, I'm... It's We're getting into late rounds. These are rounds where I will make a mistake if I'm not careful. Um... These are these are the rounds where I will be getting complacent. Like the first rule of me doing any kind of challenge run is that I am an idiot. And despite the fact this should be the safest point in the run. Like, I'm, oh, I mean, you've already seen that. Like, I shouldn't have stayed to pick up coins and items. That was a dumb thing to do, objectively. Um, do I have... I don't think I have any more water outside of this bottle. And what well, I've been talking for an hour and 49 minutes at the moment... <laughs> However, now I can pretty safely get the money. And I'm, I'm going to. Um, it helps to buy supplies for future runs. And like, horsemen drop a lot of money. Also, yeah, there's a way up there. It's I, I could start using it. I don't think I'm going to. It doesn't draw enemies into the wrong, in the wrong direction. And I quite like that my current route does. 
I wonder how much damage an exploding chest does. Because those chests will presumably still be there when I come to fight the horsemen. I, yeah, again, I can beat... I've got a plan to beat one of the horsemen, which, if I recall correctly, is safe. I will either need to... I'll need to work out exactly where the spot is, or I'll just need to look up uh, my notes from last from when I investigated this. Yeah, but I've got a route for one of them. And then, like, the ideal... Uh, I don't know if I... So my real, my real conundrum with this is, do I go back in bounds for the final two horsemen? I think, if I recall correctly, my plan is to beat one of the horsemen just in this Forbidden Valley area down here. So I beat one of them around the corner on the way to red blocks. I get them stuck in a position where uh, I can hit them. They can't hit me. Uh, then I... Those are only normal spiderlings. Let's, let's get down... Oh, I'm not... No, this this could end my run. Okay. Uh, you saw how close an Admiral was to me there. Admiral's one hit you. In an ideal world, I'd have been to Forbidden Valley by this point and would have that potion, but... Those aren't the rules for this run. Hello, what are you and why are you so close to me? I am uncomfortable. What was that? It was stuff that was actually... That was an admiral that was pretty close to me. That I... Like, that I really dislike. I wonder, can they just not hit me through the rock? Or does their AI not let them? It, actually, there's a reasonable chance that... So, I'm I'm pretty certain the game checks for certain things. It checks whether or not you have anything directly in front of you for certain attacks. I wonder if Admirals have something which stops them performing attacks if they it's like a wall directly in front of them. Otherwise, I think their attacks... I know player attacks don't pass through solid objects. I feel like... Enemy attacks might do, though. I know what the player sees as solid. Enemies won't always be guaranteed to see as solid. So I really need to just be bum-rushing getting down there as soon as possible. I should, from now on, not stop to pick up any coins. I should just jump straight down. Because the odds of stuff going wrong are incredibly high right now. If I make a mistake. Wait, is this? No, this is remaining 15. Okay. It's next round. We'll get off. Which normally would be, you know, you healing up, you setting up for the four horsemen. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be much of that. Oh, this is also, I should say, this is the longest run I've ever had. Uh, well, not the longest in terms of time. Actually, that confuses me. How do I have a 76-minute run on here? Was that on here? I might think it's something else. It could, maybe I was just investigating out of bounds. I don't know, maybe that was, I bet that was old strategies down there. That would have taken that long. That kind of makes sense. Okay, that's fair enough. That was probably the the live stream I did a while back. Hopefully. Okay, so now I will get the money, because next round I have off. The fun thing with this is this says sub hour might be possible. Um, okay, I set up then, I guess. 
so my starting position for this is actually like here, I think. If I recall correctly. I don't think they come around if I stand here. If not, if they do, then I've got to... So I'm going to watch which way the guy nearest to me runs. If he runs down, that's fine. If not, I've got to lure him specifically down, which I have a route for. That is ah, that's going to be hard. Okay, I just I think I just hope for the moment that he... That scares me. Okay, yes, yes. Yes, don't turn to your left. To my left, I guess. Um, okay. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. I think it was here. Okay. You need to be sure it's taking damage. Okay, it's taking damage. So this is the one I have a strat for. I don't have strats for any of the remaining ones. Like, I've got the rough concept that I can fight the guy by the Forbidden Valley one. I can fight him over by Forbidden Valley. After that, all bets are off. All bets are off, and actually, I think I have to come back in bounds. Okay, I've got, I've got to get a sense of their aggro range. I, uh, I bet there aren't. I the thing is, inbounds there aren't going to be any large areas where I could dodge, and I get I get two shots by these guys. I think um, if I just get hit by a single of their three projectiles, if I'm at range, I get two shot by them. The issue is, I'm I think I can in principle get it down to two of them. I don't think I can get it down. But I, I don't think there's anywhere I can stand which is large enough for me to properly fight a horseman. I mean, there's no way I'm getting that. Actually, I probably could. <laughs> now I think about it, that'd be quite funny. But that's that's dumb. That would require me doing one jump, um, which I could fail and I could die on. So I'm not going to do that. Look at this character growth. So I think here, here I do have some stuff I can abuse. Specifically, I can abuse the terrain to my advantage. Here's to, or I can abuse the fact that, yeah. Uh, okay, so this, this guy should be fine. This guy, I've got to not mess up. But in prints, okay, so I can't go that far back, that far back de -aggros. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Need to have healing items on hand. Okay. No, 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 no. Not like this. Not like this. Not because I was too busy getting my healing items up. No. No, this is not how I die. No. Okay. That I'm annoyed with because I, I thought that was the going to be the uh, rearing up attack. I'm annoyed with that, but that wasn't a bad run. That's huge progress. I think it's just I either need to practice fighting horsemen hardcore style or I need to uh, come up with some specific strats. Well, I guess those are kind of the same thing. 
it seems I can just ad lib those fights. Because the, the amount of consistency I would need in order to have pulled that off was way more than I had. Like, I died and came close to death multiple times. I need to work out a little... I think I need to work out their AI. I need to work out under what... I thought they basically always alternated between rearing up and shooting projectiles. I thought they basically just went back and forth between those two at basically fixed time separation. Uh, constant intervals. I'm wondering if that's not the case, or if that was the case, but only in an older version. Possibly should have saved that for a run, actually. <laughs> I'm going to have too many Maelstrom bricks soon. Okay, soon might be a stretch, but... And just get rid of the random items, then we're going to sell sell our loot. Because actually, we've made, we're definitely turning a profit on these. Which I find quite funny. Because I, I don't recall if we turned a profit on the old runs. I don't recall how viable they were. Field rules. Saved a spear of staying on another account somewhere. That's the most powerful weapon I have, and in case I do ever do stuff with weapons on these. I don't care about stunning. I mean, I, I do. It does interest me, but... Sorry, you weren't the highest damage weapon I owned. To be fair, the highest damage weapon I own I can't use. Is that level 30 or level 20? 20, okay. Um, just get rid of this. I'm getting rid of... <laughs> getting rid of stupid imagination regeneration. <laughs> yeah, and this... Even in a run, there's no reason. So sometimes, so I've got items like that, and I do keep this around just in case I, just in case this, I forget why, but like, uh, maybe it's just for practice runs. Oh no, it's runs where I, back in the day where I realised that I was, I didn't have enough uh, healing items left, and so I was like, well, realistically, I'm not going to survive anyway. So, the, the, yeah, sure, this invalidates the run, but let's at least get the practice in. Okay, one thing I do need to get... Notion potions. I need to get quite a few of them. Super notion potions make basically no difference to anything. They do make a bit of difference, but... I don't want to take up slots with them. I'm actually going to go for... Quite a few of those. Um, and then... I guess I fill up the remaining inventory with... I wonder if this will fill up inventory or run out of money. I think it fills up. fills up um can i trash rush drum bricks i can i'm mm, strongly debating that oh I'm actually, I know I used one because I didn't think it was worth it. I'm going to get some Thirst Quenchers. Because I, hmm, maybe I should have put all my money into those. I think they've got some practical use. All right. 
That sets us up well. I think I'm actually going to move this down. So I'll do this. Um, there we are. In principle, there's no reason this should ever come off my hotbar. But in case it does, we'll do that. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm going to end this video here because it's been a long one. But yeah, that's I mean that's world record for the little that means. Um, and now I've just got to work out some strategies for fighting horsemen. The issue is fighting horsemen in confined spaces. Oh no, I had an idea, didn't I? Dang it! I forgot. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Okay. That's an improvement, though. So the idea... Actually, let's... I can do this now. If... Well, I'm not in a run. And speed boost myself. The idea is that we make use of the Venture League building. Because the Venture League building has the useful property that... You can get enemies stuck on it. Kind of in the same way that I mentioned you can get enemies stuck under some of the rocks up there. You can get enemies stuck on this. Um, now, I don't want too many enemies stuck there. Because they can still attack if they've got ranged attacks, which these guys do. But... I Okay, so I take out one there. Like, my issue is I don't want to be fighting two horsemen at once. If there's any way I can possibly avoid that. So I get... I, I take one out in the corner there. I then need to come up with a way... To aggro... Guy spawns, what, somewhere over here... And can aggro me all the way. I'm used to being able to walk through that. Uh, aggro, like de-aggroed when I went like over here, probably. So. Interestingly, they can run out of their own de-aggro range. I <laughs> want to walk through the wall. Um, yeah, so they can run out of their own de-aggro range. Um as long as they're running to a point that is back within their aggro range. Will you damage me again if I keep standing here? Doesn't look like it also. I can't, no, I can't do that. Okay, yeah, I do just have to get in the corner there. It's been a while since I've done this, and it's now a hundred times harder. Oh, there we are. I messed it up. And if I go again, I die. And really annoyingly, there's basically nothing in Nimbus Station which lets you regen health. I'm fairly certain this basically just only ever drops imagination. Because they assume you're not taking damage here. Um, I, yeah, I don't have. Yeah, so, okay. So, strategizing. I can get, I can get too stuck on this. Oh, I can get, I can, sorry, take one out. I could potentially just get the remaining three stuck here. I just dislike the idea of having multiple, because essentially if I get hit once, I die. So the question becomes, how confident am I in my ability to i don't think i don't think i'm confident enough in my ability to dodge with them stuck there so next question okay i'm actually gonna, gonna quickly go into gonna change over to a test server 
And I'm actually, because I'm realizing I can just test this out um, rather than just theorizing. Well, okay, not with... I won't be able to test this out using uh, Horseman because it will take me a little while to get back up to that round, but I can test it. No, I've just completely messed up my own file system. Sorry, I've got a, I've got a system for keeping track of um, different uh, boot con config files of different server IPs. Running out of water and sore throat. No, well. I don't have a sore throat yet. I'm going to have a sore throat. Um, uh, let's get my password. Quickly. Okay, what's that? Password one, two, three. There we are. I'm in Nile Forest. Huh. Oh, I know why I'm in the old Forest. I was trying to work out a way of getting on top of the ship. Well, aside from the obvious, just springs you up to it. Which I might do at some point. I, I feel I should... There are some iconic places I should get to with spring shoes at some point on a live server. I should bother getting up to the ship. I should bother getting on top of Bob's head. And should do both of those. Okay, uh... I want to say it's also oh, I'm, oh, I'm not <laughs> I just saw the top of my head and I hadn't quite worked out every, where everything was okay um <laughs> my character was just invisible I'm very very small brain sometimes I'm sure you guys have already worked that out <laughs> Okay, so the question actually first off let's get stuff stuck. Hello there. I think that guy's stuck. Cool. There are two of them stuck. Okay. So, question is... Can I... Is there anywhere I can get where I can attack the obviously for the moment we're just testing this with stronglings but is there anywhere, is there anywhere where I can attack the horsemen where they can't get me these guys have the collision in it and they have their visual collision so I can probably, in principle, get up onto the top of this tree, but that's not going to be enough to get onto this building, is it? It's pretty close, actually. If I can get up onto the top of that tree, the issue is I'd... Oh, no, no, that's fine. They'd all be... Mm. Technically, I can projectile jump uh, with horsemen. Although, normally, that's somewhat set up. Um, I don't know if I could do it without a setup for it. This should in principle be doable. Jump I maybe? Yeah, okay. Oh no. Don't fall. Good. To reset myself and then yes okay Ugh, 
I'm not certain I'm out of their range here. But I I can take a leaf out of my uh, Stroming Mech book. I don't need to be out of their range for the whole time. I just need to be able to run into their range, hit them, and then back out before their projectiles can reach me. Because they're stuck. Okay. So the question then is, I, can I climb the tree? And can I do that whilst I'm being... I don't know if you can hear the... Oh my, no, my window is closed. It's that loud. Okay. Um, okay. So potentially, that's a route. I need to... I can almost certainly not use this tree to climb. Because they will be shooting me from there. So I would need to either get into this tree directly, which I don't think I can do. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that's not doable. So I need to get into this tree then. Is doable. Could potentially speed boost that. So okay, so I can get onto that branch. Um, don't know how much freedom of movement I have whilst I'm there, though. <laughs> this is actually going to be just in the middle of the hardcore bonds run. You get a really difficult pass parkour section. It's quite funny. Unless, ooh. I, okay, okay, I can simplify things a little bit. I think, I swear there was a way of just, like, popping up onto this. Hmm. That's fine, I've got this route. Okay, so, essentially, actually, I may be able to, because I've got the, the, ban, the ban hammer on this account, uh, the uber hammer. I have quick circles. Actually, I don't. Yes. That's huge. Okay. So this next bit, will I slip off of it? Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's possible. Oh, this is dumb. Okay. I think what I do... Yeah, okay. Uh, first off, I will then speedrun this. Okay. We're just going to, as quickly as we can... Uh... I just dropped that so it could draw aggro. I have some stuff when I was out of range. That kind of... That means that then rather than running around the whole map, I just have to run towards it. Because I know everything's going for it. Guess it'd be better if I had a thwok. To be fair, I can... I may well have a thwok, actually. I can think of one thing I would have wanted to test, which would have needed a thwok. That's actually, I honestly, I think that's kind of cool if it comes down to a really difficult couple of parkour tricks. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. I don't know if it actually is fast to have my fly speed up this high. Faster to have my fly speed up this time. I'd honestly probably be faster if I had there's the uh, there's uh, wing tail speed. I think which gives you a permanent speed boost as a GM item. Um, yeah, honestly, I think it's probably faster if I just ran around without flight. A speed boost would be nice, um, but I think a flight. Forgot which round we're on. That flight's a little bit too strong of a speed boost. I 
forget about this so you can't ground pound. Did I not? Huh, I could have died. <laughs> Just being an idiot. Um, I mean, I, I shouldn't have given I am holding the GM hammer, but... This is me we're talking about. Of course I could have died. I'm an idiot. I don't remember if I can GM hammer a chest... Or if I can uh, smash a chest with buff me. I don't remember if buff me wins or the chest wins. I swear back in the day it used to be um with like early early DLU chest used to be uh, max 15 damage to another player or to another enemy or just anything max 15 damage to anything but the person who smashed it basically so it was easier to troll yourself than to be a troll to someone else um which is sad but also understandable um Yeah, honestly, the main delay here just being that in between rounds. Ironically, though, yeah, I'm... Was I, oh, I was messing around at the start. I was about to say, because, like, I, I do think I am probably still slower than doing uh, this than a proper four-player speedrun would be. Presumably beat single player speedruns. Um just because I don't have to don't have to fight King of Hell, I guess, if nothing else. Now, I like I like the idea of just doing laps of the center. Um, however, it takes them too long to get to me. So yeah, the real question is the attack range of the ranged attack. Can it get from there to there? I think it can. Which would be a big problem. <laughs> Like, I know they could hit me if I was standing on the top of this tower, if I recall correctly. I think they could hit me if I was standing on the top of that one as well. Um, however, I'm hoping this extra distance might be enough. The fact that they're further away, the fact that I can jump back to kind of avoid their shots. Like, I can peek from cover, they can't. They're stuck. And they don't have any concept of peeking from cover. Um, Yeah, the issue is, I've got, I'm have got. i looking for something that's high, that's... Oh, wait, what about this? Oh, the thing is, the tree just gets me. I, like, in principle, yeah, I could make it to the tree, but that doesn't actually help. Because the trees... It would have to be... It would have to be... In order for the tree to be helpful, it would have to be high enough that there was no way I'd be able to jump to it from the building. So, no, tree is irrelevant. To be fair, I... Mm, I could, in principle, allow myself, um, like, I could allow myself spring shoes. Um, like, there's no reason in terms of this being a, like, the idea for this is just, would it be possible, like, the inspiration was, would it be possible to do bonds in a hardcore run when you just got from, uh, got uh, out of Avant Gardens? And like, you can, there's, the, the issue here isn't kind of the time spent, 
the issue here is the risk of death, and there's no real risk of death in Nexus Tower. Um, yeah. I mean, technically, there are ways you can die. Um, aside from just smashing yourself, um, there are out of bounds routes which can get you, uh, which can get you killed. There are soft locks you can get into uh, without bounds routes. Um, and there's the uh, there are the explosive combat dummies. Those can all potentially kill the player, but like if you're if you're doing a basic safe hard early game hardcore you run, there is you, you shouldn't run into any of that. There's no there's no reason ever to go out of bounds. Um and there's no reason you should be getting I'd be impressed if you can get that far in the combat challenge. Just look at it that way. <laughs> Heck yeah, backpack space time. <laughs> I love set in. Let's probably set in for size. I don't remember what it actually is. Okay, chests haven't despawned yet. <laughs> no. Don't want to do it again. With GM powers, I died in Battle of Nimbus Station. With full buff, buff me, I died. No. Annoying. Is Resistance Force 4 the one where I get an extra heart? No, no, it's not. It's Smash them all 4 or Smash them all 5. Like, okay, I, like, yep, yeah, that was, oh, I know now, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, it turns out they do still deal. They do still insta-kill you if you're within the range. God damn it. <laughs> ah, annoying. Ah, oh, well, this shouldn't take too long. It's just... This is... I, I I think I find this kind of thing more tedious just because it is completely thoughtless. Like, there is no risk, no real tension, but also I need to... Like, I can't just talk about something randomly because I do need to... Like, I'm always having to pay attention. Because I'm... I'm trying to get it done as quickly as possible, so I need to be looking at where the next enemies are. Oh, I can't believe I did that. It's so incredibly on brand for me, but still, like, that was dumb. And the thing is, we're going to deal with this, and it's going to be like, yeah, they can hit you. <laughs> like, right, that's a waste of time. But I don't th I, even if they can hit me, I'm not con... Assuming I could get up there, I don't think it's a waste of time. I just don't know if I can get up there. Then again, I wasn't, I wasn't too much further away on the... On the one guy that I baited over by red blocks. I don't think I need that much more height. Yeah, and then again, do you get no I th I think that might I think we might actually be more for chance. I do, one thing I really do miss is, like, 
is the fact that I, realistically I'm never going to reach the stage again because there's with the updates there's no reason that I will like the strategies the meta's completely changed there's no way I'm going to reach the same level of uh, of game knowledge about each round or like where like I used to know where enemies spawn I used to more or less exactly know that aggro ranges and like that's kind of all changed like 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 even if even if I do start looking into like true like ultimate hardcore uh, bonds where I'm not allowed to use the big one wait a second wait what's the big one's not the big one's not something you can get when you just enter Nexus Tower what am I going on about that was the old challenge used to be just uh, sorry just arriving at Nimbus Station that's what the old challenge used to be it's clearly not anymore we can use the big ones crooks only crook stalies Okay, technically it could be Crook's Dragon Slayer, but let's just go with the assumption that it's Crook's Dailies. Um, because Crook's Dragon Slayer is not on my list for stuff to do quickly. Um, stuff to do quickly and safely. I wonder whether I would do Butterscorch or not for Crook's. I don't know if she counts towards Crook's Dragon Slayer, but I... Like, I'd almost be tempted to say, like, no. Yeah, yeah, I'd almost be tempted to say, yeah, Butterscorch, because if you get, m most of the time, if you get hit, you're dead anyway. More or less. And, like, so the, the risk of being hit off the platform, it's like, yeah, well, if you hit, you are dead to begin with. I guess to be fair, maybe not. You could have extra health points by that stage of the game. You could have six, which would actually save you. So I don't know. Um, I, it just seems most li likely that you do have the risk of being knocked off the edge. However, you don't ever really get one shot off the edge. Getting hit off the edge normally is multiple shots. I don't think I lost many Butterscorch, hardcore Butterscorch runs to being knocked off the edge. I think I lost most of them just being killed directly. Which means 5 versus 6 health doesn't actually make that much of a difference. Like, well, sorry, which means with 6 health, yeah. I yeah can more or less just okay. I'm not gonna not gonna be dumb this time. Can I enact an an anti ninja being dumb policy? No, the things haven't spawned in yet. Huh? I really thought the chests already appeared. No, I guess they don't. Well, they... These things went to the outer ring, didn't they? When the chest spawned in so clear, that was after Whack Blido. Wow, I was much further than I paid attention to. I was probably directly after Whack Blido, wasn't it? I got bored of waiting for the 30-second timer. Dang it. Why am I like this? Why must I be the way that I am? <laughs> Most of the time, big fan. Some of the time, I do stupid stuff like that, like what I did in that previous run, and suddenly I'm like, hmm, dang, maybe being, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not, that's not the way that I should be being. That is kind of, uh, yeah. Somewhat classic, me though. Do get bored of stuff which isn't challenging enough, or which not which isn't challenging enough. I don't know. Which doesn't feel meaningful enough. I think would be very hard time motivating myself to do stuff 
in which I don't find much meaning. Which is odds that I do manage to play some of you, given objectively I know there is very little meaning to this. I guess it has managed to attain meaning in my eyes. Because to be fair, like you've got to you know, you're getting meaning from somewhere somewhat arbitrarily anyway. Like like even even if you do find or yeah yeah even if you do find out today something like religion gives you meaning you've picked the particular religion you have like well okay you may uh, it's, it's kind of one of those things okay hopefully you don't feel you've just picked it but like every, everyone has to accept that i think well, maybe you don't but i think you can see, even if you are religious, you can see the number of people in the world who disagree with your religion. And presumably... I don't know, maybe maybe not, but I, I feel like it's not too much of a stretch from there to say that... If this many people... Like, if, if lots of people do disagree, then maybe had I been brought up under different circumstances, I would no longer... Like, this may be 100% the true religion. I may be 100% convinced by that, but I may not have found this particular god had I been brought up into different circumstances. Um, Had the snake offered me an apple, I might have made the incorrect choice. I realise I didn't delete the old video file. I should have deleted that. The one that I was up... Oh, I guess you guys didn't... Uh, no, I probably mentioned it right at the start, but yeah, I had been uploading a video file. Uh, which was why I stopped the run I was on. Nearly there. But yeah, I'm fairly certain this time gets beaten by... Just because I'm having to run around to pick everything off. Despite that, I literally insta-kill everything. I think this time gets beaten by um, the best teams in Bonds. Which is pretty cool, to be fair. All right, now we do some testing. Should put away the hammer before I accidentally murder all of them. Um, okay, well, this guy, let's get rid of. So this guy I can get rid of. He will be gone, because there's no matter what, there's no way I'm dealing with more than I have to. Okay, so I can aggro two from back there. That's just interesting to know. Most likely that means, yeah, there's nowhere, even with this guy gone, there is nowhere I can be on the map where I won't have multiple aggro to me at once. Yeah, they all see me owner oh, no, at the top oh. so the question is can i do they get de aggroed if i run up to the top yes 
Okay, so potentially, if we wanted, okay, so just thinking about potential routes, what we could do is get one of these guys stuck on the venture building, um, then run up top Diagro, then get, oh no, please tell me they're not stuck. Okay, good. Okay, let's... Yes, yeah, so we get someone stuck on Venture Building. Um, then we'd have... Then we go to the corner and we can de most of them. Okay. Turn Fly off. Ah. So many invisible projectiles. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need to speed boost them for this. That's fine. can give myself... I can come prepared with speed boosts. Oh, still none of you stuck. I, I know you can get... To be fair, I don't know you can get these guys stuck a bit. Maybe you can't. I swear I have before. Yes, okay. We've got two stuck. That's not ideal. But ideally, I'd like to only get the one stuck. Okay, so they still aggro me from this distance. How about do they shoot me from here? No. No, they do not. When do they start shooting me? Come on. Okay. So they start shooting me from... Okay. I mean, this, in theory, I think, answers the question as to what I'm going to do. But I'm tempted to end this video here. Um, this has been incredibly long now. Um, and start a, start a new video and actually pull off this trick then. Because I've got the freedom to do this. They're not paying attention to... Well, they're paying attention to me. But I'm... I'm the hun Like, the top of that building will be safe with them stuck there. And then, and then this is the part where it's... Yeah. So I've got a short time there where I will probably be taking damage can i get on top of this how high up is the no i can't really not from there and there's no way yeah there's no way i can get up onto there from that okay so i i do have to oh, i never even tested can i even hit them from here Yes. Okay. So. We've got to get all of them stuck there. And then climb this tree. Then climb that tree. Whilst being shot at. But that's fine. Because if we're assuming we've been to other places by this stage. Then I can have picked up some tough buff source. And I can... Also have picked up a, a shielding potion. So we can tank a few hits. Okay. Just cementing this video here and doing a new one and seeing if I can pull this off. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Andrew you and I'll see you around.